Hi guys, thanks for coming. Hi Rebecca, I'm glad you could make it in virtual presence on the laptop. Good to see you, sorry about your holiday. But this is important, we need to talk about textbooks. We're starting to get online physics textbooks now. We're still going to decide whether we need to go with the paper-based ones or whether we're going to go with the electronic internet ones. So why do we have to assume that we have to use textbooks? Online we have simulations, videos and other interactive applets that we can use. Good question Nick, we should always check your base assumptions. So so let's whiteboard some reasons for using textbooks, whether they're electronic or whether they're paper-based ones. Now from my point of view, I like textbook because it chunks the data. Physics is broken up into a separate fields. Our field that we're dealing with in here is mechanics. Mechanics has been around since Galileo, so it doesn't change very much. And therefore for it to be incorporated into one textbook means that the students know where it is, know what the boundaries of it are, they're not looking for things on the net and getting lost. Let me put that down, it chunks the information and it puts it into the fields of research. Um, well, the material in the textbooks has gone through rigorous testing and peer reviews, so it's considered to be a valid representation of the world, as opposed to material on the internet, which could just be written by anyone and can be untested, and it could be at a level which isn't appropriate for the students. Well, some web pages have things that are really, really basic, so might not be appropriate for higher levels of study and other things as well are aimed at a much higher level and may not be appropriate for first years. So if you just blindly search on the internet, you might not be, get something which is targeted at the level that you need. Textbooks are written with new knowledge built on knowledge which is previously taught in the book. So it's building knowledge upon knowledge and there are links between all the different parts of the textbook. So everything links together and helps to explain the concepts more clearly. So textbooks contain discipline specific words which have associated meanings and knowledge with them so that students can precisely convey this information to other scientists and engineers around the world. Yeah. Each section's got lots of information, quizzes, worked examples and diagrams to help students get a good idea of the underlying physics involved. So using calculus gives a deeper understanding of the physics, but most internet or websites often don't have a calculus background. So it's pitched at primary school and high school students, so they can more easily understand what's going on. It's easier to learn something if the boundaries of what you need to learn are well defined. So you know what will be in the assessment, such as in your final exam. Um, again, looking at something like an internet search, you might end up anywhere and it might not be relevant to what you need to know. Yeah, you need a basic understanding of the concepts to get the most out of the online simulations and other material, and textbooks give a really good condensed form of these concepts. Video is good, but it only contains a snippet of the concepts that are at hand. So teachers link the teaching and learning material back to a textbook uh, for the above reasons. Well, this is all very good. Um, our discipline head once said that um, textbooks are very good for first year students because because the material that's in them is several hundred years old and doesn't change very much. However, for second year, third year students, maybe they're not so useful because the content that they're learning changes and as it changes, the textbooks can't keep up with it. So definitely for first year students, we should be using textbooks. Well, we don't even know if a student will use a textbook if we recommend one. I get a lot of students who ask me, you know, do we even need the textbooks? Can't we just learn everything we need to know from the lectures and going to the tutorials, going to the labs and doing all the assessments? But I tell them that they can't really do that. I mean, any sort of unit or topic has a lot of content which can't just be covered in the time that you have in the classes. In order to cover every aspect that needs to be covered, you need to use the textbook as well. So the lectures can point you in the right direction and help you work through the concepts, but that's really after you've read the textbook or in conjunction with a textbook. The textbook provides you with a lot more background knowledge on things as well and gives you material in context, which the lectures sometimes can't do in enough depth. Then also the textbook basically allows you to read over the material as many times as you can so that way you can link to what you've already learned and then also you can develop your understanding further. The textbook's also got lots of uh, worked numerical examples which we just don't have time to go through in the lectures so it's important that you be able to uh, get through those as well. Even when students read the textbook they tend to start from the beginning and work through to the end and it takes them a long time to do that. It's not the way you need to read textbooks. Why is the structure of textbooks different to a novel? So novels are generally designed for entertainment and for leisure whereas the textbooks are more so there to provide information and knowledge and develop understanding. So the key idea there is that they have a different structure. Textbooks are designed to be a logical development. 
So to help you learn in a systematic way to build upon your knowledge and to build on those ideas and extend you into a more complex and deeper idea. Even though they want to read the textbook, students tend to find that they've got very busy lives. They're looking after children, they have to work, they've got parents that they have to run around after. What would you tell them so that they could get the most out of their textbook reading? Look, it takes time to master the subject and get a really in-depth understanding of the physics involved. It's not something you can do overnight. It takes time to be able to pick it up and to be able to demonstrate it to other people, to be able to master the subject. But Having said that, you don't need to read the textbook all in one hit. You can do snack studying. You can read a bit when you have time to do it. So reading a bit when you get up in the morning, uh, on the bus or on the train on the way to uni, just when you've got a few minutes to spare. And you want to be reading the textbook in a few different ways as well. You want to skim over it quickly, just get an idea of where it's going. You want to have a bit of an in-depth read to pick up on any concepts that you should know before you go into the lecture. Then after the lecture, you can go and have a bit more of a in-depth read to pick up on anything that you might have missed during the lecture to sort of cement your understanding a bit. And finally, you can go and actually try and explain that to somebody else, to your parents or your kids or your mates, uh, so they know what's going on as well. And I want to give you a bit of an example of skim reading. I've got this online textbook here. So let's go to, say, chapter four to start off with. And so we've got this list of learning objectives here, this list of ideas. And what you want to do first up is maybe jot those down on a page of notes. So I say I've written them down here. And once you've got the headings, it gives you an idea of what's going on. You can go into the text in a bit more detail and start having a look at the key areas. So you read it in a bit more detail, you know, picking up the first sentence there, you know, dynamics, uh, it's a study of forces that cause objects and systems to move. Great, it's a pretty key sentence. I'll sort of grab that and put it into my notes as well. Then you'd have a look at any of the diagrams, free force diagrams, free body diagrams, pick up on any bold sections in here. So you'd go through there and you'd jot down a few more in-depth notes under each heading. And then you go to the lecture. And during the lecture you record some handwritten materials, whatever you need to do to uh, brush up on your notes, get a bit more detail in there. And then afterwards you take those notes when you're back home again and go through them in a bit more detail and check up on the textbook on anything you haven't understood. Okay, so we need a textbook. The students need a textbook. Let's decide whether it's going to be an electronic textbook or whether it's going to be a paper-based textbook. So maybe now we could whiteboard some ideas about what we're going to do with this. 